Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial um, about putting an image onto a brick wall to sort of make it look like some sort of graffiti. Um, this is an adaptation of a Photoshop tutorial which I saw online and I will freely admit that I think that Photoshop does a much better job of this than Affinity Photo does mainly because it uses its own filters to make the image look like a sort of poster or a drawing. Um, I'm having to do an adaptation of that to the best of my ability. So if you have better ways of making an image into a poster type drawing then you probably get a better result than I will. I've got two different versions here, this one and this one. Um, I'm going to show you how I've got to both of these and you can use those ways or you can adapt them if you have a better way of getting to that sort of end result. And also a lot of it depends on the background you're going to put it on, what that looks like and how you blend them together. So I'm not going to say this is a definitive way to do it, this is how you should do it, this is just my adaptations of doing it. And a lot of it will depend on a lot of factors. Like many of my videos it is aimed towards beginners in using Affinity Photo so hopefully it won't be too chatty and too over descriptive for people who know more about how this program works. Now I will say I've on this particular image I have used the displace map options and I will go into that a bit later and this one I don't think I did on this one then but you can use a displace on both it just help it sort of blend into your background again it looks depends on the background and how you are blending things and how well this works so first things first we need an image no, a background image now this is one I got from pixabay.com and I will add links to this and to the image that I've, the, I'm going to use of the girl. Both come from Pixabay. So this, we're going to use this image first of all to make a displace map image. Now for that it needs to be black and white. So the first thing I'm going to do is to come to the adjustments, which is this icon down here. Click on that and I'm going to pick black and white. Now with this option, you can alter the colours to make it certain colours darker or lighter, depending on how you move the particular sliders. Now what we want is a very high contrast image, so the blacks are black, very black and the whites are sort of very white. So this case of just trying to find a position with these sliders to get a nice contrast image. The green is not doing a lot. Alright, let's drop that down there. I don't want that window to become too dark, so I'll go to about there. So, you know, it is a case of hit and miss and how you want it to look all right so oh, that's not too bad there's quite a lot of you know, it's much more contrasted than when it started so what i'm going to do now is just click merge so that will now be merged in and make that all one layer now believe it or not the actual displace map option works better if it's not such a clear um, crisp image so we just need to blur this a bit so I'm going to come up to filter blur Gaussian blur and I'm going to raise this up to four pixels again this is possibly something that is a, a bit of trial and error depending on your background um, because all the map really wants is the difference between the dark areas and the light areas. It's not necessarily worried about 
the detail. So I'm just going to click apply to that. And now we just need to save this. So I'm going to export it. And you come up to export. Pick your option, which is JPEG. I'm going to do 100% quality. Click export. And go to wherever you save images. Oh, I'll put it in to here for now. So just whatever name it has to start with, you do need to rename it, otherwise you're going to lose your other image. And then so I'm just going to add displace on the end of that and then save it. So I don't need this anymore. I can shut this down. In fact, I'll shut down the other pictures and then I'll reopen. Um, so I'm going to reset things. I'll be back in a little while. Right, OK, I've reopened the wall image and I have now also opened the image of the model that I'm going to use. So first things first, I need to get this image of the model, of just the model and get rid of the background. Now I'm going to do this fairly quickly using the selection brush tool and I've got snap to wedges on and I've got it on add and then I'm just going to sort of click and drag a little bit down the image and then just click a few times to get the bits that I'm missing. I mean, my particular image, I don't necessarily need the legs, but I'm going to select them anyway, just in case on your particular image, you want all of it. So I'm just showing this how you can quickly select something. Cause I'm not overly worried about it being hyper brilliantly selected because it is after all just going to end up looking like a graffiti on the wall. So it's not going to be that worried about how perfect the edges are. So once I have the whole model selected, I'm just going to press Control and J. I think it's Command and J on a Mac. And what that will do is it will place, let me turn this bottom layer off, it will place just the image that is selected on its own layer. So I can now press Control and D and it will get rid of that selection dotted line that was going around the model and this is what we're going to be working on so let me just right click this copy it and then I'm going to come to the wall image and, and then come to edit down to paste and then I'm going to come to the move tool so I can move this around to wherever I want now personally I want the hand to be under the window so I need to flip this image so I'm going to come to arrange and then down to flip horizontal and then just position it to where I, roughly where I want it which will be there, that will do. So I now have the model where I want it. So now we need to start affecting how this looks. Now the background at the moment is a slight dis distraction so I'm going to turn that off for now. And now we're going to start making alterations to this image. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to duplicate this layer. So I'll come to the layer that is the top layer which I've highlighted and come down to duplicate or you can do control J command J. So we now have two layers of this. Now I'm going to duplicate that again. 
and then I'm going to rename this one. I'll just click on in it and I'm just going to rename that one number one and, and rename this one number two. Don't really have to rename them, it just makes it easy for, to, for me to follow the instructions that I've got written down here. Um, so I will hide the top number two layer. So I'll take that tick out and come down and highlight the number one layer. Now, to this, I'm going to add a threshold adjustment. So uh, the adjustments is this icon down here and come to threshold. At the moment, this is turned into an all white image. We just need to bring back some of the detail by the threshold. Now again, this is all dependent on your image that you're working on and your particular tastes. Um, I'm going to come up to about 70. Let's try. Let's try it on 70. And then I'm going to merge this into. It will merge down into number one. And then I'm going to change the blending mode of this number one to color burn. And you can change the blending mode by dropping down this menu that's up here. It starts off at normal and come down to color burn, which is there. And then I'm going to come back to the top number two layer. I'm going to highlight and that layer and make it visible again. And then I'm going to add a, a levels adjustments to this one. And I'm going to bring the blacks up to about 35 and the white uh, to about 86 and the gamma I'm going to just move this up slightly to about 1.3 well, I say slightly it's quite a long way 1.3-ish, that's okay. And then I'm going to merge this into layer number two. And I'm going to change this layer's blend mode to luminosity, which is down the bottom somewhere. There you go. So next thing I want to do is to merge visible and it will merge all these three layers that are visible and not the wall because it's not visible so I will right click this top layer and come down to merge visible and what that will do it will make a single layer of these three layers that I have done here so I can now turn off that one turn off that one and turn off that one so this now is the only layer that is visible I can now bring back the wall layer and now this is where it comes to um, we're going to start mucking around with the blend modes in a minute but right um, so the blend mode for this I'm going to it can be pretty much anything you want. Um, I personally found that the best two were either multiply or color burn. And it is color burn that I'm going to go with. But again, like I said, for your personal taste and your particular images, you may want to try something else. So that is now the color burn blended image. And now I'm going to duplicate this layer. So just right click it down to duplicate so that sort of intensified that effect and what I'm just going to do I'm just going to 
lower the opacity of this layer just so we are uh, intensifying the effect but not quite as much as it was so I'm going to come to about 30% on that and must be each time I've tried this it's come out different depending on where I've set it so they won't always look the same um, now what I want to do is I'll again hide this wall and I'm going to again merge visible so I right click and merge visible and what I now need to do is change the blend mode of this merged layer let me bring back the wall and I'll change the blend mode of this again and again we can try that's a bit dark well let's try it with let's try a darker color for a change see how this one comes out so we're going to go with darker color now this is where we're going to use the displaced map now you can do this in two different ways if you come up to filters and um, I think it's distort should be here somewhere yeah down here we have displace now the displace option it will help whatever it is you're trying to blend in um, it will sort of hopefully follow the cracks and crevices of the wall to help it look like it's on the wall you can do this in two ways you can either just get it to load the map from the image that is already there the particular wall image which I don't think works as well and also I don't really think the displace option works as well in Affinity Photo as it does in what I've seen in a Photoshop probably the best way to get, do this is to load it from the map which is the file that we saved at the beginning so you just click on load from map and then you just have to find where you saved it which should be somewhere down here then we go wall displace click on that open and let me zoom in a bit now it's just a case of how strong you want this effect to have now I've, I've found that this a very little movement does affect it quite a long way hopefully you can sort of see how this is having an effect and spreading out into the cracks and crevices you can go the other way which is pretty much the same effect so you don't want to go too mad with it I think it started off on 10 let me go back to 10 well there's a little bit of effect on there so let me just raise this up to 20 and see what that goes to let's try 30 so like I said, it, it depends on your image and your tastes. Yeah, that's not too bad. Come out again. And then just click apply. And in theory, that would be the end of this particular part of the tutorial. I'm not as happy with the the way I've blended this particular one. Like I said, the different blend modes work differently and the, the end results will work or they may not work. So you could just save this as it is under a new name or we can take it slightly further and just click on the top layer and again merge visible so all of those layers are now joined together 
you know, the background and the model. And let me just zoom out slightly. And then I'm just going to change the perspective of this. So it's not such a sort of flat image. And so I've come to the perspective tool. And then I'm just going to drag out this side here. That side. So until you get something that you like and then when you're happy just click apply so that now looks like we're now looking sort of these bricks are now bigger and more towards you and the bricks at the back are smaller and further away so it gives you a sort of a feel of the wall is going off into the distance it's a small trick but it I think it looks better than just the flat wall but it's not too bad it's not quite how I wanted it to end up looking but as you can see it varies from how you blend things and how you do the different layers so you can try all sorts of different things and get different results so let me just get rid of all of these layers. I'll hold down. If you have the top layer highlighted and you come down to the layer that you want, the lowest layer that you want to get rid of, I'll just hold down the shift key and click on that bottom layer. And then I can just delete all of those and get back to my original wall image and back to my model image and we will try version two of that um, procedure. So again, I will just copy this layer, come back to my wall image, edit, paste, flip the image and then move it to where I want it to go. So much like in the previous version, I'm going to duplicate this. Well, first of all, I'm going to hide the background. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'll rename that one two, And I'll rename this one Right, sorry, I accidentally lowered the opacity there. I didn't mean to, so I put it back up to 100. So I'm going to hide the top layer, number two, and I'm going to work on number one layer. Now to this, we're going to change this into a black and white image. So again, come down to the adjustments. Now you can either do this by using the black and white option, or you can do it by the HSL, HSL and just drop the saturation down so it is just black and white and then merge that into the layer and what I'm going to do now is to duplicate this black and white layer so right click and duplicate and then I'm going to change the blend mode of this second version of number one from normal to color dodge. That. And then I'm going to invert this layer so where, where it is now black it will be white and where the white it will be black so to come to that you come up to layer and invert or you can do control and I command I um, so the actual black areas haven't really altered that much but it is inverted and next I want to do is 
add a new live filter and the live filters is this icon here so I'll click on that and what I want is Gaussian blur and then I'm just going to raise that Gaussian blur until as much of this image comes back as you want for your particular taste um, I'm going to bring this up to about 14 14.5 that will do and then I'm going to merge that into the layer and then I'm going to make the top layer visible, highlight it, make it visible and I'm going to change the blending mode of this to hard light I found to be quite good but again you can try let's try, try something different this time and try the vivid light one so I'm in unknown territory here I'm trying something differently um, and then lower the opacity of this if needed Right, so that's at naught, and just I'll bring it back up to let's try around the fifty percent roughly mark. Right now, I want to merge the visible layers. So again, because the wall is off, it's just going to merge these layers. And then I can turn off those layers. I don't need those anymore. And we just have this top layer. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this. Let me bring the wall back. I'm going to change the blend mode of this. Again, color burn probably works the best in a lot of these cases overlay soft light is not too bad but multiply is not again not too bad but I'm gonna go with the color burn option and then I'm going to duplicate this two maybe three times just to intensify how that looks Again, it's up to your personal taste. Let me do this three times. Yeah, that's not too bad. And again, hide the wall and I will merge visible. And I can get rid of that one and that one and that one and then bring back the wall. So the only two layers that are visible are these two layers and again I'm going to change the blend mode of that to color burn and then it's just a case of like before using the displace map so um, filters distort this place now I'll try this one loading from the image below first of all so I'll, I'll go load from map from layers beneath and as you can see on 10 which is a default setting it sort of scatters around all over the place and let's try it from load from the map that we saved earlier is there as you can see loading from the black and white map has not such a destru destructive effect as using it from the um, image that's already there um, it may vary from particular image to image but for me I found it better to use the displaced map from the saved version we did before 
Let me try and have a look up here. See again, you see it's just starting to break up and sort of go into the contours of the wall. So again, let me try and let's go up in increments of 10 again. So you don't want it to affect it too much. I won't go as high as I did. I won't go up to 30 like I did before with the other one. I'll, I'll leave that on 20. Zoom out again. Click apply. So again, like before, you could now save this um, as it stands, or you could again merge visible. Come to the displace. Zoom out a bit. And then again, like I did before, alter the perspective. Click apply. Zoom back in again. And then there you have another version of the image on the wall using the displaced map. And like I said at the beginning, a lot of it depends on how you blend things and and what options you use to change this into a drawing and obviously the background you're going to put it onto. So basically that is the end of the tutorial. Hopefully you will learn some things from this. But just really take away the fact that you, if you experiment a little bit, you will get some completely different images and you may like the results or you may not. It's sort of a, it is a bit of a hit and miss process. So thank you for watching and goodbye.